This, this may, this, this, let's just see where this goes. Get the fuck up. Simon says, get the fuck up. Throw your hands in the sky. Brody asked if I would trade one inch off of my dick for a hundred pounds on my total. And if that were true, would I go two inches for 200 pounds and then three inches for 300 pounds? We're kind of getting to my whole dick size right now. But anyhow, he continues, you know, would I keep going until it was a deficit? Well, there was a time in this sport where you could have cut my entire fucking dick off for five more pounds on the total. Because that's what my level of commitment was when I was in the sport trying to be the best that I could possibly be. This is something that's been on my mind for a while because it's frustrating in some ways because, and I hate to generalize lifters as a whole because I know that's not true. And I know it's not the case at all, you know, and I hate to use Facebook as a fucking reference for anything because it's a joke, but where's the discipline anymore? You know, everybody wants this to be a sport and to be recognized as a sport. And the people who are at the top of the game who I would consider and that would consider themselves athletes in the sport, not hobbyists in the sport, that's, that's a different thing. I've discussed that in other Table Talk videos. You know, I love hobbyists in the sport. I love people who love to compete in the sport just to have fun. You know, those, actually those people are more important to the sport than anybody else because they make up the majority. You know, those, those people are great, you know, they're, they're awesome, but at the other end, you have those people who are in the top 10, in the top 20% of those who compete in the sport, and they want it to be a sport, but they fucking treat it like they're playing a fucking game of Candyland. You know, it's, 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 it's fucking ridiculous to me. You know, I, I came up through the sport training with people that I didn't even know were living in their fucking cars just to being able to train at Westside you know, and, you know, the sacrifices that were made, you know, to be able to put another pound or another five pounds, half these fucking sacrifices, I can't even say on video, but they were made, man. And it was, it was the number one priority in, in my life for a long time. You know, it's, fuck, I can't even think back of how many years it took me to graduate from college, but it certainly wasn't four. I think it was eight, nine, who the fuck knows? I didn't care. What I cared about was my fucking total. So if there was a meet coming up or the nationals coming up or the junior nationals coming up, I didn't fucking take classes. You know, I trained for the meet. Everything I did every single day was geared around how am I gonna be ready for this meet? What do I need to do to be ready for this meet? Who do I need to meet to be ready for this meet? What, Every fucking thing I did for 20 years or more evolved around fucking getting ready for powerlifting meets. And I wasn't even that good of a lifter. But I didn't want to walk away from the sport saying I could have done this. I should have done that. Fuck that. You know, I wanted to walk away from the sport knowing I did every goddamn fucking thing I possibly could do to try to make and advance myself into the sport. And now I see shit like, you know, I, I, I'm not gonna be, I can't go to the gym because I gotta fucking walk my dog or I can't go to the gym because my cat box needs changed or, what the fuck is that? Where's the discipline in that? You know, where, where's the discipline in, in striving to be your best? And I understand that people want to be balanced and have a balanced life, but how the fuck do you know what balance even is unless you're unbalanced? You don't. And how is it any different 
than any other sport if that's what you're striving to be. How can a fucking junior high wrestler be more committed to their wrestling sport than a fucking powerlifter training for the top title in their federation or country or whatnot? Because it happens. I see it. You see it. We all see it every fucking day. You know, a junior high athlete's got more fucking discipline and dedication for the betterment of their sport than some of the best lifters we have in our sport. And we sit back and say, oh, look at our kids. They're fucking lazy. They, they all get participation awards. They get this, they get that. But they're more fucking dedicated than half the lifters I fucking see. It drives me absolutely insane when I sit and think about it because you know, when you get older, there's a time when it happens to all of us, there's gonna be a time when you're not gonna be able to do this anymore. It may be because of injuries, it may be because of personal choice, it may be because of job, it may be because of a lot of different things. There's a window of opportunity that you have if you're blessed to be one of the best in this sport. That window of opportunity needs to be taken advantage of, not fucking broken and cloudy and all this bullshit, because when it's gone, it's gone. And when it's gone, you look back, are you gonna have regrets? Fuck yes, I have regrets. I got a lot of regrets. So does everybody who's ever been and tried to be the most successful in any sport endeavor that they really cared about and really wanted to try to be their best in. But you know the thing with regrets? You have to fucking earn them. You know, you just can't sit back and say, oh, I regret because I didn't go out with the boys on Friday night. That's not a fucking regret. And I don't want to try to stand on a fucking soapbox and all this other kind of stuff and give examples of all the things that I regret doing and all the things that, you know, put my family through and so forth because of this. But, and I don't want to leave and, and give examples and provide a bad example for anybody because the things that I did would be, you know, a bad example, you know, for other people that are coming in the sport because they're things that I regret. You need to earn your own fucking regrets, but you're not going to earn your own regrets unless you put yourself out there because I'm telling you right now, if you're in it and you're trying to be the best of the best, unless your genetics are so damn good that you can do whatever you want and you're still always going to be the best and you're always going to place, the person who's going to sacrifice the most is going to be the person who's going to fucking win and the person who's going to advance. The person who's not willing to pay the price isn't going to fucking move forward. It's not going to happen. So, Brody, the takeaway from this is if I could go back knowing what I know now, I may have done some things differently, but I'll guarantee you this, I would have earned new regrets and with no doubt, had I been willing to trade my dick for 100 pounds per inch on my total, consider it done. Mm -hmm.